loved phone in the world. The iPhone 6 and the iPhone 6 Plus. Well, good morning, everyone. With stainless steel Apple, with two display sizes. These are our new generation retina displays. We call them Retina HD, their colors are stunning, they're accurate, sRGB accurate. They're a lot bigger. Here on the left is an iPhone 5S, in the center, iPhone 6, and on the right, the iPhone 6 Plus. 4.7 inch for iPhone 6, 5.5 inches for iPhone 6 Plus. The iPhone 6, 1334 by 750, 1920 by 1080, full 1080 display. But here's the real magic. They're done in phones thinner than anything we have ever made. And we took special advantage of the iPhone 6 Plus because of all those pixels to do some new things with our apps. So for example, the Messages app now has a new horizontal two-up display. Your weather shows more of your day. Stocks, for those of you who follow stocks, you get a great horizontal view now with two-up. Mail has two-up so you can see your inbox and your messages. And when you bring up the keyboard in any of your apps with the iPhone 6 Plus, that keyboard takes advantage of the display area to give you some more keys. There's even a new horizontal home screen view. It's called reachability. Well, if you double touch, not even press, just double touch the Touch ID button, this is what happens. The App Store now has over 1.3 million applications. The Apple A8. This is a 64-bit chip, up to 25% faster CPU performance up to 50% faster graphics performance. The iPhone 6 with the A8 chip is up to 50 times faster than the original iPhone, up to 84 times faster. It's 50% more efficient. Who will be playing pedal? Multiplayer battle arena gaming is the most popular game genre in the world. iPhone 6, 50 hours of audio playback. The iPhone 6 Plus, 80 hours of music listening. There's our motion coprocessor, a new generation, M8 can tell when you're cycling and you're walking, you're running. It also has a new ability to estimate distance. Well, there's a new sensor built into iPhone 6 and 6 Plus, the barometer, 150 megabit per second. Maybe you've heard of it, it's called Volti. That stands for voice over LTE. There's also faster Wi-Fi in both of the products as well, 802.11ac, and there are great new cameras in both iPhone 6 and 6 Plus. It's an eight megapixel iSight camera, it has Apple's innovative True Tone Flash. There's large 1.5 micron pixels. Has a fast 2.2 aperture, but most importantly, has a new generation eyesight sensor in it. There's one feature different between the two of them. The iPhone 6 has digital image stabilization, but 6 Plus adds something new with the iPhone line. Optical image stabilization. It takes a beautiful HD videos at 1080p. 1080p, of course, we can take 30 frames a second, but now it's 60 frames a second as well. The 6 and the 6 Plus can take video up to 240 frames a second. Do you know on the other side of your phone, there's a brand new sensor, iPhone 6 and iPhone 6 Plus, packed with features from everything from those amazing displays to the super fast 64-bit AA chip and on and on. There are new cases for both phones, new leather cases, gold, silver, and space gray. It starts at just $199. iPhone 6 Plus also comes in gold, silver and space gray, and it starts at just $299. We're gonna to start to ship them on September 19th. So here you see the list of all the devices that are supported. And I'd like to show you just how fast and just how easy it is. That is Apple Pay. And we've got a groundbreaking NFC radio antenna built across the top, but it's also easy to add a new card. You use your iPhone iSight camera, and now with just a touch, you've paid. Apple doesn't know what you bought, where you bought it, or how much you paid for it. Apple Pay, it's fast, it's secure, and it's private. With Apple Pay, you can just check out with a touch. 
and you see the credit card and the shipping address, and now, with one touch, I've bought it. It's that simple. We have one more thing. <laughs> Apple what? As it turns out, with every revolutionary product that Apple has created, a breakthrough in user interface was required. What we didn't do was take the iPhone and shrink the user interface. The display is too small, and it would be a terrible customer experience. It's this dial. It's called a crown. If you press the digital crown, it returns to the home screen just as you would expect it. Now, I also have my iPhone, which is required with Apple Watch. So if I press the digital crown at the top here, it takes me out to my applications. And I can pan just by simply swiping on the screen here. I can also get an overview of all of my apps just by rotating the crown that will zoom out to a universe of apps. And to customize your watch face, you just force touch on the display and it goes back a little bit. Now I can simply swipe over here and I can choose another watch face. Created something called glances. And the way you get to glances is you just swipe up from the bottom of the watch face and you'll see information that you choose to have here. And with this, you can actually control music on your iPhone, music on iTunes on your computer, or the music that's stored right on your Apple Watch. And when you're notified of things on Apple Watch, we're using the Taptic Engine to give you feedback on your wrist. And if you do choose to look at something that's coming in, you just raise your wrist and the notification will come in. Here's a calendar invitation. Excellent, I'm invited to the karaoke outing finally with Eddie. I'm going to press reply. Now we've created something called QuickBoard to enable really quick replies to messages that you're getting. Or I can use a new se selection of animated emoji that we've created for Apple Watch. The first one is that we've built Siri into Apple Watch. Now we also looked at how you can carry your photos with you. Uh, by default, all of the photos that you favorite on your iPhone or your Mac will just show up on your Apple Watch. One other app, app I'd like to show you is Maps. And I can pan around just by swiping. I can also zoom out with the crown. If I rotate the crown, it zooms me out. I can see more of the area. And I can find things by dictation, my favorites, or if I recently searched for things, I can just tap on those. Apple Watch will give you taptic feedback on each turn, so you'll know whether it's time to turn left or to turn right. And those feelings are different for each direction. So you can actually know without even looking at your watch which way to go. It's like having this invisible guide with you. We've created something called digital touch. When we're getting hungry, we can just tap each other and we'll feel it on our wrist. So I know how much Jeff loves sushi. Now, in addition to the work we've been doing, we've also been working to enable third-party developers to extend their apps to Apple Watch. Watch kit apps that appear right in the home screen and also the glances that we saw. BMW lets you see the charge level in your car and if you forgot where you parked it, it will actually show you a map of where you left your car. With the Lutron app, you can control the lighting and the scenes in your home with one tap. We have two new applications in Apple Watch. The first is the fitness app, and the second is the workout app. Of course, Apple Watch works with iPhone 6 and iPhone 6 Plus, but we've also designed it so that it will work with iPhone 5, iPhone 5C, and iPhone 5S. Or we're using inductive charging. It has a magnet and it aligns perfectly to the back of the watch. It is so simple and elegant. Apple Watch starts at only $349 and it will be available early next year. Apple Pay will work with Apple Watch. It will redefine what people expect from a watch.